Hey guys, the Explorer of Horror here, the Horror Boy, and today we are wrapping up our reviews on the Friday the 13th franchise. It's been a lot of fun going back and seeing these movies again. They are films that I highly enjoy. This and the Chainsaw Massacre franchise are like two of my top favorite horror franchises of all time. Um, this series has a great story. Like I said, it progresses through each movie. Uh, you see Jason grow into the icon that he would become, and I I just love this franchise. I think it's been a lot of fun going back and watching these movies again and reviewing them for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the reviews, and today we're wrapping them up with a film that people would consider to be like the uh, series going out the whimper, but I would have to disagree with that because I actually really do enjoy this movie, and that is the Friday the 13th 2009 remake. I have to make Marcus Nispel, who has made two other remakes, uh, Conan the Barbarian, which uh, Conan the Barbarian, which uh, really, really, really sucks. Like, I'm not a fan of that one. Um, I haven't seen it in a long time, so maybe I'll have to see it again. But I remember not really liking that one at all. Um, and the Texas Massacre remake from 2003, that's a pretty decent movie, in my opinion. Pretty decent remake. But this is probably my favorite remake out of all of those uh, Platinum Dune uh paramount new line remakes that were coming out michael bay produced stuff um and this is probably my favorite one um is the movie spectacular no is it anything too special no but as a remake and as a friday the 13th film i think it nails a lot of stuff um i know that there are people have problems with this remake which i'll get into in a second uh the fans are very split on it Either you love it or you hate it. Personally, I really enjoy it. Um, I thought for it being a Jason movie, I thought it nailed everything uh, that it needed to. And only has a few problems, in my opinion. Really honest, I think about it, only has like a handful of problems. But, yeah, I mean, it pretty much starts out with these kids. They're going out to Crystal Lake. They are looking for this marijuana stash they have out in the woods and they can't find it and it's getting dark so they camp and while some of them are having sex one of them goes up to find the stash he ends up fighting it but he also finds jason the sackhead jason which is a pretty awesome look for jason in this movie and i really do respect that because really they could have just made this movie to where it was just a generic one look for jason but no they went the extra mile and Include the sackhead Jason. So that's pretty cool. Big fan of that look for Jason. Um, Jason kills him. The other teens walk off and find Jason's house. And um, even before all that, though, you have a recap. Well, pretty much a remake of the ending of the first Friday the 13th where the girl chops off Mrs. Voorhees' head. And Jason is watching and finds his machete. And then it cuts to those scenes. And while they're in this house, Jason attacks them, kills the boyfriend. The girl runs back to the camp. Uh, the teens there have been killed. And it's like a 20-minute opening, like, um, intro to the film before you get the actual opening credits. So it's like 20 minutes of an intro, which is pretty awesome. Um, and in this movie, you have Jared Padalecki from Supernatural. Um... Don't watch that show, but I know when I was in school, people would not uh, be quiet about that series. It was a series that, you know, all the girls were, Oh my God, Supernatural. Yeah, I didn't see it, but I know he's in that. Another guy from the My Bloody Valentine remake is also in that too. Um, and I thought Jared Padalecki in this movie did a great job. I mean, he's a guy who is the brother to the girl from the, from the opening of the movie. Uh, she's gone missing along with her friends, and... He has went out there to try to look for her. So he's pretty much playing a similar role to uh, the guy from part four. Where he is going and looking for his missing sister. And there are these teens. Which I would say this. If you've seen The Hangover, Super Bad, any of those. You know, Pineapple Express. Any of those late 2000s raunchy comedies. This is pretty much the cast of this movie. Um... And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but pretty much these teens are going out there. Uh, the kind of leader of the group, um, 
who was he's the guy from Meet the Spartans. I don't have IMDb pulled up right now, but I know that he played a really great asshole, pretty much this douche, jock, rich college kid. And is there a problem? No, there's not a problem. You know, pretty much that great scene. What are they going to do about it? And it's like uh, him and Jared Pedley kind of have this uh, rivalry. And they are going to go out and have this party at his house, the rich kid's house. Meanwhile, Jared Padalecki is looking for his sister. And basically, teens start getting killed. Jared Padalecki meets up with the rest of the surviving teens. They're trying to get out of there. Jason picks off some more people to where you get the ending. Where Jared Padalecki and the lead girl, or the girl from the opening, um... Have to battle Jason. They have a pretty good fight where, you know, they crawl into a bus, been tipped over, and Jason is stabbing through it. And and you have the tunnels, the underground tunnels, which I really liked. Them getting chased and, you know, Jason fighting Jared Padalecki. You know, Jason do that thing where he jumps to the window and grabs uh, the lead character. It was a really great scene. Um, I like the scene where the girl gets more powerful. Like, she stands up to Jason she gets this chain around him, and he's getting pulled back into the shreddy, like this wood chipper machine. And the, the girl has a really lame line, and I will say that this is really bad. Hey, Jason, say hello to your mother in hell. And stabs him, and then he goes back into the wood chipper machine and gets his head, you know, all cut up and stuff. Really, really bad line. And also, and I'll get to the problem with her in a second. Um... But, yeah, and then pretty much the, the the cliche ending where they put Jason in the lake, they think it's over, and Jason shoots out of the water and grabs one of them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the movie, I mean, it has problems, but I don't think it has enough problems to get as much hate as it does. Um, it has a lot of nudity, uh, to the point to where it does get kind of bothersome. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with nudity. I mean, if there's... And especially in this movie, there's some hot chicks. Like, really hot chicks. Probably, I would say, rivaling every other Jason movie with hot chicks. But when you have a sex scene every 10 minutes, or every 20 minutes, it seems, or some kind of a, you know, vulgar sexual reference, or some vulgar Rob Zombie-type language, or Rob Zombie-type dialogue in your film, and just some disgusting vulgar dialogue every scene it gets distracting that and the whole it trying to rip off raunchy comedies from the late 2000s like you watch super bad they do a lot of stuff in this movie like super bad the way they talk the way they act um it's pretty much taking that and combining it with the jason series i really didn't like that because the teens all feel they feel like just cardboard cutouts of that time like you know of that raunchy late 2000s super bad kick-ass uh pineapple express those are all great movies but they were kind of doing their own thing you know they were kind of doing that genre on their own you didn't need to put that in a jason movie because really it does not fit, in my opinion. There's no funny dialogue. They try being over the top and trying to be funny, but it doesn't work for me. Um, and pretty much, besides the Clay character, Jerry Padalecki, everybody else in this movie kind of sucks. Um, and also the, the guy who plays the douchebag, he's a, he does a good job playing the asshole. Um, besides them two and maybe that guy's uh, girlfriend, the jock, kind of guy his girlfriend like she was pretty good too i didn't like uh clay the clay character's uh sister i thought she wasn't really the best actress um so yeah the acting really isn't because it's just ripping off like you know super bad and pineapple express those kind of movies just ripping that off and um so as far as problems go i think as i'm trying to get the problems out of the way first so it's that you have the fact that, I'm not even going to say spoiler alert because this movie came out 10 years ago. So if you haven't seen this one yet, go watch it. But the the lead girl who was actually in the movie the most time, like the most, um, 
and I actually was getting into her character. She gets killed by Jason just out of nowhere, and then this girl becomes the lead, the girl from the opening, which I didn't care for her acting, so, or, I don't know if it was the script or whatever, but I just didn't care for the character. But, yeah, she takes over as the lead. I didn't really like that. I didn't like all the, just, it, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that in the movie. Like, if you want to have it in a couple scenes here and there, or have some sex scenes, I ain't got no problem with that. You have some really, really hot chicks in this movie. I will say it's pretty much softcore level. So if you're wanting to see a, a softcore kind of fucking badass slash movie, and you know, if you're all for it, then that should be really awesome. You know, it doesn't bother me, but I can, it, it is really obvious they're trying to put as much as possible. Like borderline porn in this movie, borderline porn. There's like one scene that like carries out for like five minutes of one sex scene. And I'm just like, you know, once in a while, you know, like in the older movies, you had, you know, um, Debbie Sue Voorhees, which was, she's beautiful, you know, yeah, those really hot chicks in the past. But you didn't, like, in this, it's like softcore level. So, you know, again, not only seeing that, but when it's to the point to where it takes up a lot of the movie, it kind of gets annoying at times. The characters make some dumb decisions, like trying to... I don't know. They they just did some really dumb stuff and they really didn't seem very like like very smart characters. Um besides that, I love everything else in the movie. Like I said, the the dialogue, the like overabundance of sexual stuff, like sex scenes and boobs and sexual language, like every other scene. Um I'm trying to think. I'm really trying to think it's tough because it is a movie that I do have issues with, but as far as the positives go, I think the movie looks great. People say, it looks like uh, Textures of Massacre from 2003. I don't understand that. I do not understand that. That movie and this movie has completely different looks, other than maybe the, the forest. Like the forest shots of the moon coming through the woods, that's kind of reminiscent of... Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 2003, but everything else looks great. I think Marcus Nispel is a very visual director. It makes his movies look really, really good. Um, I think it has a great atmosphere, great woods atmosphere. Um, I thought that Derek Mears delivered a great job as Jason. You know, he's fast, he's uh, aggressive, he's intimidating, he sets up these traps, he is not playing around, he is not no Part 8 Jason where... You know, Jason is a ghost teleporting everywhere, and he gets toxic waste all over and becomes a little kid. No, no, that's all, that's all gone. This one, you know, legit, fast Jason, smart Jason. I love that. I love this Jason in this movie. People say, well, he made traps. Have you ever seen parts two and three and four? I mean, have you at least seen those movies? He, he puts traps up all the time in those movies. All the time. And then people say, well, he runs. He runs in two and three, and he sprints like this guy, and uh, Ted White sprints like Derek Mears in part four. So people try to say that, too. I don't understand those things. If you're not a fan of those things, it's awesome. Like, it's okay. It's, it's your opinion. But, yeah, I'm just like, dude, he sprinted in part four, and he ran in parts two and three. So that shouldn't be a problem. People say, well, the tunnels, they're a stupid idea. They gotta explain how Jason pops up from one end of the camp to the other, and from one end of the camp to the other. I thought this explained that. I thought it did a great job explaining that. I don't mean to get rude or anything like that. I just do not understand those issues with the movie. I mean, I hear it all the time. Um, but yeah, the tunnels I loved. I like how he had the little bells down there to tell him where people were at. It explained that. I thought it was creative. Um, I like the scene where Jason finds the hockey mask and puts it on. Great scene. Um, you have some fantastic death scenes, some gory practical effects. Like there's a great shot where a guy, like a sheriff, hitter, is looking through like the the peephole on his door, and Jason jumps down, takes a like fire poker, shoves it through the back of the guy's head, through the eye hole, and through the door. All done in one shot. Great, great shot. Great, awesome scene. Classic, classic kill. You have 
uh, the scene where the girl is underneath the, the dock and she gets stabbed in the head and pulled up for a little, you know, boob shot. Uh, the guy in the boat, you know, is like, woo, oh, and then like the freaking arrow just comes and hits him right here. And he kind of like looks like he's confused and then he just kind of falls over. It's a great thing. You know, a guy getting an axe in his back, picked up, thrown back down. The axe goes through the chest. Uh, the asshole character, he's screaming like a girl. <laughs> runs, gets like, Jason stabs the machete through him, grabs the machete, like cuts him through, like messes this guy all up, throws him in the back of the pickup truck. The pickup truck drives off. It's a great death scene. Um, that really intense death scene where... Um, Jason grabs the Asian guy because he's like, here's a hockey stick. It fits your look. It completes your look. And Jason grabs him and just takes the screwdriver and slowly puts it under here and slowly pushes it back into his skull. And it's done practically. It looks beautiful. Um, great, great special effects there. You know, the girl getting burned over the fire in the sleeping bag. Um, the guy being, like, stabbed to the floor and then dragged back down. That's a great scene. Um, you have a couple off-screen dustings. It really doesn't bother me that much in this movie because they make up for it later on. A girl being hung under the wall, which is a great shot as well. Um, you have a really brutal one where this guy steps in a bear trap and Jason comes over and hits him, boom, right here in the head with the machete. And you see the effect, his head is split like this. And like it's split open. And then Jason just kicks the machete out of his head. It's just so freaking badass. Um, but yeah, man, the movie is just fucking awesome. As far as kills go, and suspense goes, and, and chase scenes go. Uh, I like the music in the movie. People say the music is pretty bad. I actually personally really enjoy the music by who's the music who did the music who did it steve jablonski who i think did most of these remake scores as well as other generic most of his scores are generic but this one was unique kind of used a synthesizer score kind of had that like 80s score but with a modern twist i liked the way it sounded i liked the main theme of the movie i liked the the chase scene music so i love the music in the movie that looks i thought it sounded great um, it's a very fast-paced movie. It does a lot of things well. Uh, you have some, like I said, great shots. Jason standing on top of the house, looking down and walking away. Um, Jason, you know, like I said, putting the hockey mask on, you know, coming over and finding his dead mom and then picking up the machete. So that stuff was all done well as far as look goes, as well as far as the shots go, Cinematography goes, the score, the gore, the, you know, boobs, blood, and mayhem. Like my friend John says, the famous formula for slasher films, boobs, blood, and mayhem. And this movie achieves that. And as a Jason movie, it's just really, really well done, in my opinion. I don't understand the hate. I really do enjoy this remake. Um, it has its problems, but still, you know, still enjoy it. Um, yeah. So you have those awesome things in it. The ending fight between Jason and the leads was pretty good. Derek Mears was amazing in the movie. I like the way Jason looks. I like the way the mask looks. I like how they made Jason a badass. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my review on the Friday the 13th remake from 2009. I actually really do enjoy this movie. I think it's great. Um, definitely ended the series so far on a uh, great note. But, yeah, that's pretty much my reviews on the Jason franchise, the Friday the 13th franchise, all of the movies, one to the remake. And uh, if you guys are curious on more Jason content that I've done, I reviewed the His Name is Jason documentary. I reviewed the video game from 2017. I reviewed a figure, my part three figure, which I have back there. Um, I did a video with John where we talked about uh, Friday the 13th Part 5, and Halloween 3, so I've done a lot of things, and the playlist has everything in it, so if you guys want to see more videos, including a three-hour, four-hour long discussion video where me, Andre, and a couple other friends, 
went through all the movies in one take. So, yeah, if you guys want to go see that stuff, it's in the playlist for the Friday Teeth reviews, as well as my old reviews for these movies, just in case you guys are curious. But anyways, guys, it's going to be, my, it's going to be it for this review. It's going to be it for the uh, Friday Teeth reviews. It's been a blast. It's been fun. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining me along on this journey. So yeah, that's the end of one franchise. And now it's time to get on to another. It's time to get on to the night he came home. So yeah, this franchise will be coming up next, guys. I can't wait. Uh, I don't know particularly when I'm going to start it. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I don't know. But pretty soon, the Halloween reviews will be coming to... The Horror Boy channel. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching my review on the remake. And I will see you guys in the next review. The Explorer of Horror is out. See you guys.